are fathers really that necessary? You know, it's crazy we can even ask a question like that. You wanna know how important father figures actually are? Studies done in South Africa found that without the presence of older, mature bull elephants, the younger bachelor males were more likely to exhibit aggressive, destructive, and straight up menace behavior, escalating all the way to them projecting their daddy issues on the south side of a rhino. And it wasn't until more seasoned bulls were brought back in that the rhino-centric assaults decreased. And even though with humans the stakes don't usually involve a rhino's rectum, subtracting fathers from a population can be just as problematic. I'm not gonna list all the ways cause then we'll be here forever, just know that a majority of the prison population wouldn't even be there in the first place if their fathers had come home from getting milk. Unless you're an athlete, in which case it's just a buff to your greatness. There are many fathers in nature that are just as important, and seahorses aren't really one of them. We call seahorses amazing fathers, and really all they do is spunk out new recruits to the senses from their midsection. It's really no different than what every 14 year old does the moment they discover incognito. Except with them, their swimmers aren't undercooked. And I'm sorry if that ruins seahorses for you. No, like, actually, I'm sorry. So sorry, in fact, that with the help of ChatGBT, I'm going to genuinely apologize for my actions by not apologizing at all. I've made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment. ChatGPT is just one of the services provided by the sponsor of this video, Opera Browser. Opera is considered the best browser for tech fans and it's the first browser to go live with integrated generative AI tools, which means you can finally get the answers to the truly hard hitting questions of life. No need to go monkey branching from tab to tab when AI has all the answers you'll ever need. But like a seahorse after his fifth contraction, there's still somehow more. Opera also has browser native contextual AI prompts. What that means is you can request AI assistance based on what content you're viewing with just a click. If you're like me and your attention span has eroded to the point where you'd rather mop a beach than read more than one page at a time, one of these AI tools lets you shorten a long read into more digestible chunks. And so much more. If you get Opera using the link in the description, you'll get these AI prompts on default along with ChatGPT already in your sidebar. You can also create a pin board of pretty much anything you're interested in. You can actually check out my pin board in the description. You also get to choose from a library of thousands of wallpapers to personalize your browser. So make sure you use my link below to download Opera and shout out to Opera for sponsoring this video. But in all seriousness, yes, seahorses are the only fathers that give birth and they do so after six weeks of incubating his brood of up to and over a thousand babies in his belly. Now add in the fact that seahorses will often mate for life and reinforce their pair bond with a synchronized dance and Stevie Wonder can see how seahorses got the reputation of being the best fathers in the animal kingdom. Except the male seahorse will occasionally cannibalize a small percentage of the kids he pops out. And while it's true a baby seahorse is called a fry, Papa Seahorse acts a little too accordingly by turning his unluckiest children into an infinite food hack. Not enough to truly threaten the survival of the next generation, but just enough for me to confidently say you can find about 10 better fathers in nature. Like, for example, the fox. Like the seahorse, the red fox is often monogamous, meaning that one Spider-Verse line can easily apply to them too. At first, Father Fox has a full-time job bringing back food to his partner who stays home with the kids. But as they get older, that's when the tough love starts. Once the foxlets start getting bigger and more capable, their dad starts showing up with less and less food. Instead, he'll start burying the extra food near the den and even cover it up with twigs and brush in order to teach his kids how to be more independent and find it themselves. And that's not the only life lesson served by Father Fox. Cause in an area where foxes were getting murked by coyotes, researchers noticed male foxes playing with their kids by chasing and ambushing them. Almost like they were trying to teach the next generation how to avoid predators. And speaking of coyotes, you'll find that there are some W dads too. Coyotes are just as loyal, and sometimes even death doesn't make them find a new mate. Coyote couples typically hunt together, but as scavengers who will often finesse food from much bigger threats like wolves and bears, it's usually the male that'll stake out a possible bounty first while his mate watches from a safe distance. That way if worse comes to worse and he gets put on a shirt, his mate still has a chance to raise their children as a single mother. You wouldn't see a seahorse do that. And honestly, wild candids in general kind of break the rule of male mammals being more of a deadbeat than a roadside raccoon. Father wolves are just as overprotective as you'd expect. Here, you can see a father wolf harassing a black bear and trying to get it to chase him after the bear wandered and got too close to his pups hidden near some trees. And African wild dogs will actually let the pups feed first rather than have the most alpha male get first serves and have everyone else fall in line. They've also been known to spend days looking for any lost pups, but the gold standard of dog fathers would have to be the golden jackal. They're another couple that takes till death seriously, and like with coyotes, they'll often go grocery shopping together. And when his partner's pregnant, Father Jackal digs a burrow for his mate to rest in and he'll defend that den with his life if it gets to that point. And once the pups are born, the male jackal will go to any lengths to find enough food, even if it means squaring up with wild boars or stealing food from right under the nose of tigers or wolves. And even though he risks everything for food, most of what he eats just gets regurgitated back at the den for his kids. They're top tier dads, because if anything ever happened to the male jackal, there's a good chance the mother wouldn't be able to keep the kids alive on her own. So yeah, wild dogs seem to mostly beat the deadbeat dad alligator but at least they have a partner they can count on. Meanwhile, the great value ostrich of the Andes has to hard carry the whole bloodline by himself. 
The Rhea is a player who runs game on up to 10 females who all take turns dropping eggs in his nest. That's about as far as Mother Rhea's contribute as they leave the male to look after the massive family by himself. Daddy Rhea will even live off a quarter of the food he normally would, since he'd rather starve than leave his nest of up to 60 eggs unsupervised for too long. Being a stay-at-home single father only gets more difficult after they hatch, where Latin Big Bird acts as their bodyguard, while also teaching his class of chicks where to find food and where to best avoid becoming it. All while his baby moms try out every flavor of male like samples at a mall, because female Rias are for the whole prairie. But I'm pretty sure the father Rhea likes it that way, since once the eggs are laid, he'll chase off anything with a pulse that even looks at them the wrong way, even if anything includes an amorous female. Daddy Rhea puts his kid- actually that sounds kind of gross. Father Rhea puts his kids first, but he's not the only member of the rat type family that does. Cassowaries are like if nature engineered an animal with the sole goal of f***ing with my sanity. But even this Jurassic drumstick finds time to be an S tier father. Female cassowaries also social distance from their eggs and children, leaving the parenting all up to the male. And even though cassowaries are actually really shy and would rather run from smoke than to it, a male will turn it up to 100 if his children are involved. And just like his cousin the Rhea, the blueberry flavored paralysis chicken spends 9 months raising his clutch of chicks, teaching them how to survive until they can successfully do it on their own. In fact, cassowaries are such devoted dads that the whole reason we call them the most dangerous bird in the world is likely because of the lengths we've seen them go to protect their children. In 2012, a photographer was charged and yeeted off a cliff by a hostile cassowary that I am now willing to bet had some kids in the area. But considering both them and Rias have to carry the well-being of their entire family on their backs, I don't blame them for lashing out. The giant water bug does the same thing, except with them, it gets ridiculously literal. Water bugs will lay their eggs above the water, and it's the male that stands guard and defends them against risks to minor safety, which includes scaring off other females that would easily turn his pride and joy into protein powder. There's even one type of water bug that'll physically carry up to 150 eggs all on his back. With his future progeny glued to him, the male water bug is stuck like that for weeks, while his mate gets to go out and act like a free agent switching teams and looks for a new male to dump dependence on. In this time, the father water bug can't fly, can't eat as much, he has to constantly climb up to the surface to let his eggs get air, and he's a much easier target for predators. But at least with him, the backbreaking labor of being a father ends the moment they hatch. I'm sure there's a certain crocodilian that wishes it was that easy. You probably wouldn't expect a cold-blooded predatory sledgehammer to have a section in a video about great fathers. But if that were true, this picture wouldn't exist. This is a male Gariel acting as a sentient school bus for about a hundred of his kids. Normally, croc miners ride shotgun inside their parents' jaws. But armed with a mouthpiece designed for griefing fish, instead they choose to be on water bug timing. Just like Daria, the guy Gario flexes a whole harem of females as procreation partners, and he gets to be the one to play one-man daycare as he guards them all. He might not be close to the single father the Rhea, Cassowary, and Waterbug are since his mates don't go out for milk indefinitely, but Gario's might be the most unexpected animal on here. And right there with him are frogs. For example, the smooth guardian frog, that's his name by the way, I'm not making that up, he flexes his parental prowess by being the one to stay with the eggs and guard them after his mate lays them into the ground. And after almost two weeks of waiting, he's the one that carries the tadpoles on his back after they hatch, and he's the one that finds a nice pool for his brood to finish developing in. And it's not like he just dumps them in the first source of water he finds. Nah, not only are they particular about where and what they put their tadpoles in, the father will even equally divide his children between pools if he can. Like if he's carrying 20 tadpoles, he'll put 10 in one pool, 10 in the other. They're not the only frogs that take a cue from Dom Toretto and put family first. The giant African bullfrog can have not hundreds, but thousands of little ankle biters in a breeding season, and it's the dad that looks after them all. And for almost a month, he defends them like a slimy, water-loving pit bull, biting anything that even looks like a threat. Yeah, they have teeth, by the way. He'll even go out of his way to dig a canal to a bigger pond if he notices that the one his kids are swimming in starts to dry up. They're solid fathers, although admittedly they can resort to seahorse behavior by eating some of the kids he was guarding. But then again, cannibalism is kind of what frogs do. Darwin's frog will also eat his own children, but with them, they have a process. After his girl lays and leaves, once again, he's the one that sits with them and waits for them to start moving. Once they do, instead of backpacking his family, Darwin's frog takes it a step further by swallowing the eggs, letting them develop in his vocal sacs. And when they're ready, he delivers them to the world by puking his progeny out. And depending on how you define birth, you can argue that seahorses aren't the only fathers that qualify for paternity leave. They're definitely not the only fish. Another unlikely superhero father is a type of fish known as the stickleback. It starts with the male stickleback creating a nest for his females to lay their eggs in, and he holds the nest together using a special glue formed by his kidneys. That stuff isn't exactly easy to make, and the stronger the current of the river he's in, the more kidney glue he has to use on his house. And sometimes the cost of making his own product means he dies soon after spawning. But the ones that don't get Mufasa in the process revolve their entire lives around their families. They constantly have to chase off jealous rivals, and he'll spend most of the day fanning his clutch of eggs so that they can get enough oxygen while also washing away parasites and waste. And they'll even go as far as guarding the fry up to a week after they hatch. 
And he's not the only fish that's known for playing Mr. Mom. The common goby often raises hundreds of eggs by himself, the same way the stickleback does. Except the goby's also likely to eat the eggs that take the longest to hatch, just so he can dive back into the dating pool sooner, so... Maybe seahorses aren't that bad. But if you're looking for a father that you can trust with 100% of your children, we gotta talk monkeys. With golden lion tamarins, it really does take a village to raise a baby, and nobody takes more of a role than the father. Cause he's the one that grooms, plays with, and carries his kid around. In fact, the only time he leaves them with the mother is so they can nurse, and even then, he takes them right back. Not only that, but he'll even act as a midwife during birth, as the father will help clean the baby, fresh out the womb, and even bite off the umbilical cord. And it's far from just them. Owl monkeys also have the father as the de facto parent, with the mom only carrying around the infant for the first week. And now we know why. Mother marmosets like the golden tamarind often have to pop out twins that add up to 25% of her body weight. Birth is not a fun process, and it's now believed that the physical toll it takes on the mother is why the males are the ones that take the lead in parenting. Meaning, marmosets are the only other animals that figured out the concept of maternity leave. There's also the fact that males literally put their families first. You see, the thing is, with most male mammals, an ovulating female instantly triggers a rise in testosterone. It's why those same male mammals are often good at making babies, not so much raising them. But a study showed that while single mateless marmosets reacted strongly to pheromones from females, the spoken for father marmosets really couldn't care less. So not only are they devoted fathers, they're also loyal enough husbands to reject any females for their family's sake. Some humans can't relate to that. And we never thought a tiger could either, but this one managed to change a lot of what we thought we knew about them. P243 was a male tiger in an Indian reserve who confused scientists by single-handedly raising four cubs after his mate and baby mother passed tense. He'd share his kills with them, seemingly patrol the cubs' territory for danger. There was even a time where he brought down a whole cow, but didn't take any for himself and instead left it all for his cubs. And even though at this time he was an eligible bachelor, for a while it seemed like 243 was actively rejecting the advances of females just to keep his cubs a priority. This flew in the face of everything we originally thought about male tigers being just as deadbeat as their prey. And there's a good chance this wasn't just an exception. There was another case where a male named T25 was caught playing protector for a pair of orphan cubs that weren't even his. So there's a solid chance that we got it all wrong and that tiger dads are just as capable of stepping up. Just like some birds. Because when a mother kestrel got bambied by some owls, it was the father kestrel that went on to carry the family. And unlike the Rhea, kestrel males don't typically look after their chicks. They usually just provide food, but it seemed that the widower knew that wouldn't be enough. The males slowly but surely started doing all the things the mother would have. Brooding them, feeding them, keeping them warm, and even tearing up the food he brought into tiny pieces the weeks old chicks could eat. Keep in mind, he wasn't good at it at first, and researchers genuinely wondered if he'd be able to pull through for them. In fact, it took a couple tries for him to realize that his chicks wouldn't eat if he didn't do the bird equivalent of cutting up their food for them. But that's the thing, it didn't come naturally, and he still kept trying for his chicks, and he still managed to raise them. But there is no animal that does more for his chick than the last animal in this video. Be honest, you knew there was no way emperor penguins wouldn't get mentioned in a video about fathers. And it's cause male emperors have to spend two months straight alone with their egg. That's two months of complete darkness while tanking negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit and getting smacked by 120 mile per hour winds. So cold if the father happens to fumble the egg onto the ground, it takes less than a minute for the chicken side to enter the gulag. The margin for error is so small that for the two months of ice chilled, sun deprived hell, the penguin dad barely moves at all since the entire time he's balancing the egg on his feet. And when the egg finally hatches, the fasting father feeds his baby with a crop milk made from a gland in his throat making him only one of three birds that uses crop milk. It isn't until the mom finally returns from sea that they switch off and the father can finally feed himself. But by the time he waddles all the way to the breeding ground, pulls a female, does a two month mannequin challenge in Satan's icebox, gets relieved by the mother and waddles back to sea, it's been a good four months since he's eaten anything during which he loses almost half of his body weight in the process. It's like when 50 Cent nearly became a hashtag for a movie I guarantee none of you actually watched. I know I didn't. And that's assuming his mate does come back and doesn't get put on a milk carton while out fishing. At the end of the day, Emperor Penguin dads get griefed by every force of nature, all for their little gray baby face tap dancing mini him. And because of all that, I think it's fair to say Emperor Penguin dads are the goats of fatherhood. But that's gonna do it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you drink water, hug your mother. Shout out to all the fathers out there for real. Y'all really don't get enough credit. So if you have a father, let him know you appreciate him. Don't wait for a calendar or Instagram to tell you to. And if you don't have a father, my condolences. I know today's probably not the best for you. Just try to take care of yourself. And if you don't have a father or a mother, damn, okay, Batman, who are your ops? May you turn all that character development into something positive. Just know, you better have a banging college essay. Shout out to Opera for sponsoring this video. Shout out to my father for sponsoring me in more ways than one. And I'ma see y'all in the next one.